Hey eighth graders, this video is going to go over slope and how it relates to word problems. So our first situation is that it costs five dollars for two pounds of apples. Okay, I want to make a table and then I want to try to write an equation that represents this situation. So first thing that I'm going to do is draw a little table out. Okay, I'm just going to draw kind of like a t-chart. Okay, and the two things I'm working with is how much it costs and how many pounds of apples. So I'm going to write over here um, pounds of apples in this first column and then how much it cost. So a couple things that I do know is um, I'm just going to do some nice numbers. So if I bought zero pounds of apples I would not have to pay anything so it'd be zero dollars. Now the next amount that I do know is for two pounds I know it costs five dollars and it says that right in the problem above. So I'm going to think I could actually pretty easily find out what four pounds cost. Okay, because all I'm going to think is I'm going to double the amount of pounds, so I'm going to double the money. So four pounds would cost $10. I could probably easily figure out what six pounds is going to cost. So again, I could do that um, by tripling two pounds. So I'm going to triple the five, so it would be 15 for six pounds. Okay, one pound, I can add that. I always want to figure out how much just one pound would cost as well. Well, one pound would cost, um, I need to split this in half. So half of five is 250. So I could write that as five over two, right? I'd take the cost divided by the apples, which is actually 250. Okay, now, in the directions of this problem, it says that we want to try to write an equation for the cost, so how much it costs for any number of apples. So I'm going to write my cost, I'm going to use y, that's what it says to use. So to find my cost, I know it's 250 per apple. So I'm going to write it as 250 times however many pounds of apples I buy, so times x, because it's always 250 an apple. Now another way to write this, I just want to kind of point this out, is I could have also written it like this. I could have also written 5 halves times x. This number right here, this 5 halves, is actually the unit rate. How much it costs for just one apple? Because it's $5 for two apples, so I just divide that. That shows me how much it is per apple. Okay, now we're going to try to graph this equation, and we're going to kind of see what it looks like. All right, so if I'm making a graph, first thing, I'm just going to put cost of apples up top. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do some numbering here. So I'm going to push pause while I do that. All right, so I quickly numbered um, the pounds of apples I'm buying down here and then the cost. Now I counted by fives because um, it costs $5 for two pounds and then $10 for four pounds. So that's why I did that. Now I'm going to put the points on that I know. So the first point that I um, was given is that zero pounds cost $0. So I'll put that first point. And then I knew that two pounds cost $5. So I'm going to put that. Four pounds, I figured out, cost $10. Okay, six pounds would have cost 15 So I can kind of see it's making a straight line here. So I'm going to connect it and extend it. Try to draw it as straight as I can. Okay, and there I have my graph. Now, a couple things I should probably add real quick are my x and my y. Okay, and then my equation was y equals 250x because it costs 250 per apple. Or I also wrote it like this, y equals 5 halves x. Okay, now my first question for us is, is this proportional? Okay, now remember, proportional means it's changing by the same amount every time. It has to go through the origin. So it does go through the middle. And it has to um, be in a straight line. So yes, it is proportional. Now, the second thing I want to talk about real quick is... Um, I want to point out a couple things on the graph. So the first thing I want to point out is here was our equation. y equals 250x. And I'm going to write, write it the other way too. y equals x. Again, those are the same thing. So first thing I want to point out is um, that it went through 0, 0. So back here, you're going to see it's not adding any amount on. Up here, it's not adding anything on. Now, I want to show us the slope. Let's, let's see if we can count the slope out on our graph. Let's see what we notice. So I'm going to pick two points. I'll just pick these two. I need to see how much I go up and over. Because remember, it's rise over run. So on my graph, I can see that I actually go up. It looks like one spot, 
But I actually was counting by five, so I went up five, and then I went over one, two. So my slope is five halves. Now I want you to kind of come look at the equation and see what you notice. The slope is actually right here in the equation. It's what I'm timesing by. So that number you're multiplying by, that slope, another word for that is, it's the unit rate. It's how much it is for just one. So five over two is 250, right? It costs 250 per apple. So this number, the slope, actually gives you the unit rate, how much it is for just one. Um, so that's what that gives you, okay? All right, so here we have another situation. Um, Bob is going to the park. It costs him $2 just to get into the park, and then $3 for every single ride he goes on. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is kind of make a little table for Bob to use so he can figure out how much it costs, depending on how many rides he goes on. So over here, I'm going to put, here's his number of rides. Okay, over here, how's, here's how much it's going to cost him. Okay, so Bob could choose to go into the park and go on zero rides. It's still going to cost him some money. It's still going to cost him that two bucks to get into the park, even if he goes on no rides. Okay, now if he decides, well, I'm just going to go on one ride. So it's going to cost him that two dollars, plus it's three dollars for just that one ride. So his total cost would be five. Okay, now if he went on two rides, it'd be that two dollars to get in, plus he'd pay three for one ride, three for another ride. So 3 and 3 is 6, and 2 is 8. If he went on 3 rides, again, he would do 2, plus he'd have to do that $3 three times. So that would add up right here. That would add up to $11. And then if he decided to go on 4 rides, well, same thing. He's paying that $2, plus he's paying that $3 four times. So I'm just going to write it out this way. So he's paying 12 plus 2, which is 14. Okay, now we are going to try to write an equation that shows how much it costs. So I'm going to say that Bob's bill or how much he's, money he's spending, let's call that Y. And we don't know how many rides he's going to call, go on, so let's call that X. Okay, so I'm going to write an equation that shows how much he's going to have to pay. So I'm going to write Y equals, so that's how much he's paying. Okay, now I know it cost him $2 no matter what to get into the fair. So I'm going to put kind of plus 2 at the end. And then I know it costs him $3 for every single ride. So it's going to cost him $3 times however many rides he goes on. All right, so here is an equation that shows Bob um, how much it's going to cost for no matter how many rides he goes on. So just for example, let's say he decided he was going to go on 10 rides. I could just put a 10 in here and do 3 times 10, which is 30. That's how much for the rides plus that $2 to get in. So I can figure out any number of rides for Bob. All right, so now we are going to graph um, Bob's rides. We're going to make a graph and kind of see what we notice. Okay, so I kind of quickly just made a little graph here that shows how many rides he goes on and then how much it costs. So again, if he went on zero rides, it would still cost him $2. Okay, and then our table said if he went on one ride, that would have actually cost him $5. So I'm going to kind of put that there. If he went on two rides, that would cost him... $8. If he went on three rides, that would cost him $11. And if he went on four rides, that would cost him $14. Okay, now you guys can see by looking at this that it's forming a straight line. So I am going to connect it. I'll just use a different color here quick. Okay, and extend it because we can find out more. Real quick, I'm going to label my x and y axis. So it's a complete graph. And I'm going to write my equation, y equals 3x plus 2. Okay, now I want to point out some things on this graph. Okay, first thing that I want to point out. This 3, this actually stands for something. If we look at our graph, I want you to kind of look and see if you can find the slope here. All right, so I'm just grabbing a color here. If we find the slope, I'm going to pick two nice points. So I'm going to do this dark one, this dark one because these are two nice ones. So I'm going to see how much do I go up. Now don't forget over here I'm counting by twos. So I went up two, four, six. That's my rise. So I'll just kind of write that quick. My rise was six and I went over one, two. So it was six over two. Well six over two, that's actually the same as three. Six divided by two, that's three. So this three actually tells me the slope of the graph which also tells me the unit rate. This three tells me how much it costs for just one ride. 
So again, the three, the slope there, can tell me the unit rate or how much it costs for just one. And I could also see that um, kind of, you know, right here. Now, the two, the plus two, if we look at that, if we look over here, right here, so the two, that actually tells me how much it costs for just zero. So this two tells me what I'm adding on, and it's that two dollars he has to pay for no matter what. So there's where that kind of comes in. So both these numbers are represented on the graph. This two is where the starting amount for zero, and the three actually represents the slope. Because I went up, well, I went up six over two, which is the same as up three over one. One other quick question is, is this graph proportional or not? Well, if you look at it, um, it's a straight line. It's changing by that three every time, but it adds this two on, and it doesn't go through the origin. So this one is not proportional. The reason it's not proportional is because you added that $2 fee on. Okay. Otherwise, if it would have just said 3x, it would have been okay. But it's not proportional because we didn't go through the origin. We added that 2 on. All right, a couple last things. We just looked at a couple different equations, and I want to point out kind of something that we learned. Let's say we had this equation, y equals 4x plus 2, or maybe we had this equation, y equals 2x. Okay, we already know that this one's proportional. This one is not. Okay, now I want to point out a couple other things. This number we added on, this actually was where it crossed that um, y-axis. This, this was actually kind of like the y-intercept. I just want to point that out. It's where it crossed. Okay, this other number that we were timesing by, that was the unit rate we found out, how much it was per one. It also showed us the slope. Okay, so same thing down here. This shows us the unit rate, how much it is per one, which is also the slope. All right, you might want to add that to your notes, and we'll, learn, we'll continue to learn more about this during this chapter.